names in the energy sector. Oppenheimer Managing Director for Exploration and Production, Tim Resvan, and Raymond James Senior VP and Research Analyst, Pavel Muchanov. They're both here to talk about, guys, specifically what happens next. And Tim, you were operating off the assumption yesterday that of the nearly 6 million barrels that were taken offline over the weekend, that about two would be back online soon. And that's the news we got today. When's the next piece of news? And, and since you're good at predicting, what will that be? I think the next piece of news, the biggest uncertainty, is what, if any, retaliation will happen. Is that going to be a Saudi-led uh, attack? Is there going to be a broader coalition put in place? And I think that is the next really shoe to drop right now. The move looks dramatic over two days in WTI, but if you look at the future strip, out into 3Q, 4Q, 2020, it's really only up about $2 a barrel. So you've seen a little bit of pop on the front end, but this isn't really a game-changing move across the whole duration of the future strip. Uh, Pavel, you were surprised at the speed by which the Saudis were able to get things back online, but they had a lot of built-in redundancy in, in anticipation of anything coming offline for whatever reason. So immediately they were able to at least shift over to some different pipelines, etc. But Tell me your sense of what's happening on the ground in Saudi Arabia. They're acting very calm. Everything's fine. Don't worry. The Aramco IPO is going to happen within the next 12 months. But what are you really hearing? Well, look, anything that Saudi Aramco says, we need to take with a grain of salt. Uh, as you said, they want to go public, yeah. partly for that reason. They want to you know, send this message of confidence to the market, reassurance. You know, I think we, we ought to be skeptical. Look, this is highly sophisticated energy infrastructure. This is not just blowing up a pipeline as happens in places like Nigeria. This is the world's biggest oil processing facility. Yes, there is redundancy, but they will have to get uh, repair equipment, custom-made machinery imported from abroad, delivered, installed. Uh, none of that is going to be done instantaneously. And whatever Aramco says about the timetable for repairs, we would take the over in terms of the duration. Interesting. Um, uh, Tim, West Texas yesterday settled at around $62.90. That was a gain of 14.6%. Today, we can see what we've pulled back from, and it's hardly anywhere near that huge percentage. Is this a shorting opportunity? Where would you be trading this kind of move? No, I don't think it's a short opportunity because looking forward, there is so much political risk that you've had. You know, you've heard this phrase put out in the public a lot in the last day about a risk premium now put in crude. Right. There was maybe a little laissez-faire attitude about ample supply and, and possibly an oversupplied situation. Now, it looks like the Saudi disruption, maybe a couple million barrels a day for two weeks. That's 40 million barrels in aggregate. We thought it could be many multiples of that just last night. So um, I think that risk premium is, is what's there right now, and I think that will support this modest rally we, we've seen right now. And what would you pick then, Tim? What are your names that you like? From a tactical point of view, a name we really like here on the large cap side is Noble Energy. It's been a real underperformer this week because the company has exposure in Israel, a large natural gas discovery too, in fact. However, 76% of the production comes from the U.S., 90% is outside Israel. It's a stock that hasn't participated. That's one we like on the large cap side. And Pavel, what are your picks in this atmosphere? And I would just point out, because it's just hitting the tape, that the Israeli election exit polls are showing that the presidential race, remember they had the prime minister race, they had to redo it. Too close to call at this moment. We have a prediction that Netanyahu and Gantz, his competitor, fall short of ruling majority of 61 seats. Pavel, what are your picks? Yeah, so on the large cap side, Occidental, OXY, uh, interestingly enough, this company, like Noble, also has some exposure in the Middle East, specifically the Persian Gulf, Qatar and the UAE, but is predominantly uh, in the United States uh, as well. Uh, Oxy, of course, bought Anadarko not long ago, and as a result of that deal, took a hit, trading at its you know, lowest levels in about a decade with a dividend okay. yield of 7%, which we think is very safe. That's, by the way, is three times the dividend yield of the S&P 500. Okay. And that on the small cap side, California Resources, CRC, now that's a high beta stock. Yeah, it's, it's, it's down 13%. Will, it's um, definitely yeah, that's, uh, cheaper yeah, today. double-digit <laughs> moves on days like today. Great to see both of you, Pavel, Tim. We appreciate it, your expertise in all of this. And I, I agree with Pavel definitely that you can't entirely take everything that Aramco says at face value. Both of you have been great. Thank you.